grade, so I'm in the Department of Biological Sciences at Auburn University. Um, and I haven't been to this meeting in a while, like over a decade, so I really just wanted to kind of introduce or reintroduce my lab and, and my research interests. I'm looking for grad students, and I'm always looking for new collaborations, so please feel free to contact me at rmgrays at auburn.edu. Um, very briefly, the research that I'm going to talk uh, touch on today um, was done in collaboration with Michelle R. Whiteman at FSU. Um, these are the funding sources. All right, um, so most of my research has focused on regulatory variation and divergence at the level of individual wheels, so wheel specific expression. Um, and I've worked mainly in melanogaster and its close relative new simulants. Um, and from looking at this, what you see is that there are sets of very rapidly evolving genes with respect to gene regulation. They're mostly involved in immunity and defense, um, as well as in reproductive traits, so sex differentially expressed genes. So I've really become increasingly more interested in the role of sex in gene regulation, in regulatory variation, and in the role of sex differential expression and variation in those genes in variability in sexually dimorphic traits. And I'm interested in addressing those questions at a number of levels. So at a very fine scale level, with respect to how sex-specific uh, regulation is varying amongst individual alleles, um, in terms of sex differential expression and how that might differ between individual cells, between tissues, um, variability, at the level of populations, and then what that regulatory variation in populations, what that sort of means for the evolution of sex differential expression and sex dimorphic traits at the species level. Um, and I look at those questions from sort of two, what can be different viewpoints, different perspectives. Um, I look at them as a geneticist and also as an evolutionary biologist. Um, as a geneticist, I'm really focused on the role of specific genes, so for example, this is double sex, one of the terminal transcription factors in the sex determination pathway under SOCLA, um, and I'm interested in what genes double sex regulates and how double sex um, produces sex differential expression, how that sex differential expression translates to sexual dimorphism in behavior and morphology. As an evolutionary biologist, even though, you know, sort of we have these diagrams, these pathways, and it all looks very definite, as an evolutionary biologist, I understand that each of these arrows, the relationship between a transcription factor and its targets, how those genes are expressed, varies. Um, and that variability at the population level is contributing to variation in sexually dimorphic traits. I think that these two uh, perspectives complement one another. They also constrain one another, and not just in the evolutionary sense. And what I mean by that um, is that, for example, these colored arrows here, which indicate that Double sex uh, and pubilis, these terminal transcription factors and sex termination pathway, are regulating gene expression, gene expression sex specifically, and that's producing sexually dimorphic behavior and morphology. These actually sort of stand for a lot of genetics and biology that is mostly unknown. So there's really only a handful of genes that have validated, that are validated direct targets of double sex. Um, and I think that limits the kind of questions you can ask of the evolutionary. So I don't really have time to walk through this in uh, uh, detail, so I'm really just going to get um, right to the point. So um, you can look at gene expression in wild type males and females and in mutant males and females for these uh, terminal transcription factors and sex termination pathway, um, and that it can allow you to identify targets and to identify how, for instance, double sex is regulating sex differential expression. And even though we think of this um, generally we might uh, a priori develop a hypothesis that, for instance, if a gene is expressed more in females than in males, that that gene is upregulated in females by double sex female and repressed in males by double sex male. Um, that if you look at the genomic level rather than at the handful of very well characterized targets, that's not always true. And in fact, it's only true for a small percentage of genes. So these pie charts represent the different modes of double sex regulation, and these purple wed wedges are the genes which are regulated in that opposing manner. And all of the rest of this, for instance, this green, are genes which are activated by double sex in females, by double sex female. But in males, double sex is playing no role in regulating those genes. So the mode of regulation is variable. Um, and differences, uh, sex differential expression is actually also variable across genotypes. So if you're doing these studies, um, the genotype you're using matters, the tissue you're using matters. I think this also has implications for how sex differential expression, sex 
Paul, thank you very much.